Today, we're diving headfirst into the shadowy world of cybercrime, the kind that keeps CEOs and governments up at night. We're talking about Evil Core, and uh, let me tell you, this is not some kid in their parents' basement. These guys are the real deal, so sophisticated, they've even been compared to, like, nation states when it comes to their capabilities. And to, you know, really get a handle on this, we're using this uh, 2024 report from the Society of Citizens Against Relationship Scams. Now, I know what you're thinking, Scars, that's like romance scams, right? Well, they actually keep tabs on all kinds of cyber crime, and their report on Evil Core is, well, it's incredible, full of details. Yeah, what's fascinating and frankly unnerving about Evil Core is this weird mix, right? Traditional organized crime, but with cutting edge tech. This wasn't some overnight thing, some digital explosion. They got their start in a way you wouldn't expect. The report digs into their early days in Moscow, and well, it was a family business. Family business. Led by this guy, Maxime Yakubets, goes by Aqua in the cyber world. And get this, he brought in his father, his brother, even cousins, like a real tight-knit operation. Uh -huh. And honestly, that's a big part of why they were so successful. That family trust, almost an old school criminal network, but with you know constantly changing technology, super hard to crack. I can imagine. It'd be easy to write them off as just another gang, but that's a mistake. Back in the early 2010s, their weapon of choice, their claim to fame was Drydex. It was this banking malware. And let me tell you, this thing was good, scary good. So good that they didn't just use it themselves, they rented it out to other criminals. It's like a franchise. Exactly, cybercrime equivalent of franchising. Drydex was designed to swipe banking credentials, drain accounts, the works, and it works scarily well. Renting it out was genius, honestly. Low risk for evil core, but it meant that Drydex was everywhere. Bank fraud went through the roof worldwide. This wasn't just petty theft. This was organized cybercrime on a global scale. And this is where things get even more interesting, more unsettling. The report, it suggests that Evil Core, they weren't just in it for the money. There were these hints, these whispers of them being like the Kremlin's cyber mercenaries. Yeah, it's a really blurry line, you know, between cybercrime and actual state-sponsored espionage. Evil Core, they had the skills, no doubt cripple infrastructure, you know, steal state secrets, whatever you can think of. And suddenly, they're not just criminals, right? They're assets, valuable assets for any government that wants to, you know, keep their hands clean. Plausible deniability. Exactly. And the report goes even further. It straight up alleges that Evil Corps was tasked with, get this, carrying out attacks on NATO allies. No kidding. All while still running their own criminal operations on the side. It's wild, right? Like something out of a movie. It's crazy. And it gets deeper. The report names Masim Yakubate's father-in-law, Edward Bendarsky. Okay, and he's involved how? This wasn't just some family friend, right? We're talking he... former FSB agent. And the report connects him to, get this, assassinations. Whoa. Okay, that adds a whole other level to this. It reminds you that this isn't a game, you know? These guys, they operate in a world with very real very serious consequences. Absolutely. Dendersky, if he was involved, and that's still an if, it really shows the stakes, the world they were operating in. It wasn't just about profits anymore. You know, this was power, influence, maybe even silencing opposition. Having someone like him connected, it speaks volumes. So we've got this, what, this crazy mix of organized crime, cyber warfare, espionage. It's like, how do you even begin to tackle that? That's the million dollar question, right? It's a nightmare scenario. You've got these groups, maybe, possibly with the backing of a powerful nation state. Traditional law enforcement, it's almost useless. Yeah, sanctions, I mean, they only go so far. Extradition, forget about it. It's this constant back and forth, this game of cat and mouse, always evolving. This is where it really does feel like, you know, one of those... Uh, what do they call it? An arms race. Evil Corps, they weren't content just, you know, sitting back, counting their Drydex cash. The report makes it clear these guys were always innovating, always trying to stay ahead of the game, new threats, new ways to, like, exploit the digital world. And that's what makes them so dangerous, you know, adapt or die. Right. Especially in cybercrime. And we saw that with, like, their move to ransomware, first bit paymer, then that. Uh, wasted locker that really put them on the map. Right, right. These weren't random attacks either. They were going after the big fish, corporations, governments, you know, institutions, cause maximum damage, demand huge ransoms, the works. So what were they hitting them with specifically? I mean, what were the attacks like? So BitPamer, for example, that was often used to like encrypt entire networks. Yes. Yeah, businesses would be totally dead in the water. And it was sneaky, right? Often slipped in through phishing emails, you know those, or some software vulnerability. But once it was in, game over. 
And then, I mean, 2019, that's when the sanctions hit. You'd think that would slow them down, right? You'd think so. But Evil Core, they're like like cockroaches. You know, yeah. they just scatter. They didn't disappear. They got smarter. They went deeper underground, more fragmented. Some even teamed up with other ransomware gangs. Really? The report, it links them to Lockbit, another huge name in the ransomware world. So now, instead of this one central organization, you've got this network, this web of cyber criminals. A cyber crime syndicate, almost. Exactly. And that's a nightmare for law enforcement. You take down one group, another pops up, same tactics, same code, even going after the same victims. I'm trying to chop the heads off a of Hydra. Exactly. So has anyone managed to, you know, actually land a punch on Evil Core? Right. Have there been any wins, anything to give us hope? There have been some victories. The report mentions, like, 16 members recently got hit with sanctions. There are links to Lockbit. That's out in the open now. But, and this is the scary part, some are still out there. They're still developing new tools, new ways to, you know, break into systems. It's a cat and mouse game, for sure. It feels like for everyday people, you know, just trying to live their lives online, it's like, what can you even do? It's overwhelming, for sure. But knowledge, honestly, that's your best weapon. The more you understand the threats, the better prepared you are to like protect yourself. So what, be aware, be vigilant, that kind of thing. Exactly. And don't forget the basics. Strong passwords, different for every site, obviously. Yeah. Multi-factor authentication, use it everywhere you can. And for the love of all that is good, be suspicious of emails, links, anything that just feels off. Because phishing, those scams are getting sneakier and sneakier. Right. Absolutely. And stay informed, honestly. Organizations like SCARS, the ones who, you know, put this report together, their website's a goldmine. They've got tons of info on protecting yourself, your business, all of it. So much good information out there if you know where to look. It is a constant arms race, like you said, but we can't give up. Well, that's about all the time we have for today's deep dive. We've gone from the streets of Moscow to the darkest corners of the web, all thanks to this incredible report from SCARS. Evil Core, they started as a family business, but they quickly transformed into something far more dangerous, blurring the lines between organized crime and, well, who knows what else. But one thing's for sure, the threat is real, it's evolving, and it's something we all need to be aware of. Until next time, stay safe online.